Hello and welcome to Rocking Horse Talk with me David Kiss. Um, as you can see we're going to be doing a bit, something a bit different today. Uh, basically I've run out of horses to talk about um, in the shop so I thought I'd do a bit of work in a workshop. So what I thought we'd do today was um, have a look at some aspects of actual restoration work and of course the first thing we have to contend with is getting the horse off the stand and that involves undoing the coach bolts. Now that sounds like a fairly simple task. However, um, some of these bolts might have been in place over a hundred years, so it might require just a bit more than undoing the nut and sliding the bolt out. Anyway, we'll get, a, we'll get the camera around and we'll have a bit of a, a close-up view of what we're going to do. So what we've got to do is remove the coach bolt out of uh, the horse's hoof where it bolts through into the runner. And the first thing we note, if we look at it from the end here, is that the bolt isn't square through through the runner. Um, so when, when it's been done up at the back it might have bent the bolt upwards so withdrawing it could also be a problem. I think the first thing we need to do with any bolt is to make sure that to try and undo the nut that the thread that's sticking out beyond the nut is cleaned off. So the best way to do that is very carefully um, approach it with a wire brush and just wire brush any of the of the rust away from the bolt but taking great care not to uh, damage any of the woodwork surrounding it. It's it's a really quite a delicate operation as is everything to do with restoration so one needs to you just take your time with these things um, and it's very important to preserve these bolts because the, if you break them you can't buy them anymore, they're very difficult to find now. Uh, modern bolts are metric um, and these old bolts are uh, what is known as a Whitworth thread um, and they were relevant from the middle of the 1800s up until maybe just before or just after the Second War. But nowadays everything is metric and um, to my way of thinking not very nice. So I'm going to just briefly explain a little bit about these coach bolts. The coach bolts have been around a long time but initially they were made by maybe a blacksmith or individual companies and they would have been all different so we've got a couple of examples here and as you can see they're much more antique in their appearance. Um, so it wasn't until about 1840 when things became standardised um, and they used a specific thread which was the, the BSW thread. I've got one here. That's a fairly standard bolt and um, a wonderful old box of these bolts. A um, bit like gold dust these are. Um, it, just so difficult to find these now but very relevant if you want to restore um, a rocking horse and put the correct fittings back. Um, my heart sinks a little bit when I see modern metric bolts in a, in a rocking horse that's a hundred years old but anyway. Um, and over the years different manufacturers use different bolts. Um, this bolt here is typically a triangle bolt so Lines Brothers would have used that not only in their horses but all of their other applications. Um, Ayers D type horses had plated bolts so this has got the remains of some nickel plating on it. Um, the bolts for the hooves on a on a Ayers um, D quality horse were slightly different. They had a had a tapered head on them. I think they were referred to as um, plough bolts. Um, and then obviously we've come up to what would be used on the horse we've got now. So something very similar to this. So it's got this coarse thread on it. Uh, British Standard Whitworth. Um, and that's what you'd expect to find on most old rocking horses. And these, I'm afraid, are what is available now. So we'll chuck those away because we're not interested in that sort of thing at all in the workshop. So now we've got to get the bolt out of the hoof. Um, it runs through at a slight angle. Um, that's, that's going to be quite relevant a little bit later on. But the first thing we need to do is clean this bit of thread up at the end here. Um, so a little bit of a, a careful brushing with a wire brush. I've actually done this earlier so I won't bore you with doing all of that. And the next thing is um, that's really important is the spanner you use. Make sure it fits the nut correctly. Because if it's loose at all it, it might just round the nut off. So as you can see it sits there on its own so it's a good tight fit. Um, if you haven't got a correct size spanner maybe an adjustable spanner but 
Um, I'm not a big fan of those, so if you can persevere and find a good fitting spanner, um, be careful not to damage the timber. So keep the keep the spanner flat to that, and then you can loosen off the nut. And in this case, it's not that tight, so I can actually undo it with my fingers. So anyway, we've got that off there. Um, one thing to note that the nut is um, tapered on one side. It has a chamfer on it. Um, I'll just show you a slightly bigger one so you can see what I'm talking about. So. That's a bigger version of the similar. So you can see it chamfered one side and flat the other. And this was the nut I've taken off was fitted with a chamfer side to the timber. Um, there's lots of conjecture as to why one side was like that and which way round they should be. But my, to my way of thinking, if you fit it this side to the timber as you're doing it up, because it has a curved face on it, it doesn't tear the timber up. You imagine that being that way around, it's going to cause all sorts of havoc to the timber. So I always fit these square nuts with a, with a chamfer side to the timber. Right, now we've got the nut off. Um, what, what we have to do now is, is get the bolt out of there. Um, this horse was made, I think, um, pre-war, so it's you know it's nearly 80 years old. So obviously a steel bolt in in timber that's going to have gone rusty. Um, very tempting to get one of these out. This is the last thing you want to be doing because if you start hitting that, you're going to cause two basic problems. One, you're going to damage the thread on the nut, and also you're going to send a shock right up the horse's leg into the body of the horse and cause all sorts of damage. So the last thing you want to be using is a hammer. So we'll put that out of view. Um, I've come up with this fairly simple little piece of um, kit here. It's basically a small piece of wood. It has a hole, this, this side of it, a small hole, and a big hole this side of it. The small hole sits over the head of the bolt. Um, so the notion is to fit this in a clamp, so as we clamp it, the bolt is pushed into there and pushed out of here. So. I've got another one here that's fitted in the clamp. So by fitting this over this horse's hoof like that, we can get a good purchase on the bolt to push it through. Um, sometimes the, the, the piece of wood wants to slide off the horse's hoof. Um, you can use a little ooh, you can use a little uh, V-shaped block. And, and just clamp it into place under there to stop it sliding away. I'll just think I'll do that. Not me having an accident. So basically, we just clamp this piece of wood here, carefully clamp it on there. Get our clamp on there. And then just by winding the G clamp through, we can push the bolt out of the out of the runner and it'll send the bolt through the hoof. So now when I take it off, you can see it's gone, gone away. It might still be the case that the bolt's quite tight, but if you remember when we looked at the pictures of the, of the bolt, it had a square head on it. And by using a very small spanner, you can, um, find the bolt again. you can actually fit that, you can fit that onto the square of the bolt and actually turn the bolt and wind it out. I mentioned earlier that as the bolt's on an angle, when it comes out of the runner, it, if the nut's been up very tight, it might have bent the end of the bolt out of shape. But anyway, so we can now wind the, the bolt completely out of the hoof. Um, and in this case, it's coming out remarkably easily. So there we are, the bolt has come out without any damage caused to that. Um, we have the original nut, and that can go back in place. Um, just one more note on that. Some bolts were made um, were much were, were too long when they were initially fitted, and the ends of them were cut off. So, as all the hooves might have been slightly different thicknesses, it's quite important to put the bolts back in the correct place. So, a really simple thing is a bit of wood like this, arrow to the front, marking the front of the horse. This is the back um, right-hand leg. So, if we put the bolt in that corresponding hole. Um, when we come to reassemble the horse, we know that the whole thing has gone back in the right place. So when we've got the bolt out, um, what I tend to do is um, just drill through this hole. If the bolt is very rusty, you might have a lot of residue and the last thing you want to do is when you put the horse back on the stand is have a battle putting the bolts back in. So if I just 
running through through the hole very carefully with a, with an appropriate size drill. In this case, it will be a quarter drill. Just run that through. Just clean it out, and then you'll know that when you come back with a bolt later on, when you're putting it back together again, that'll slide in and out really easily. Um, so you won't have any future battles with it. Of course, all um, horses aren't fixed. Uh, the horses aren't fixed to the stands with with coach bolts. This example here, you can see that it's um, it's actually just a wood screw, but it's got lots of paint um, in it. So to get this out, we have to approach it in a slightly different manner. Of course, um, the first thing we would do if it is a wood screw like this is to clean out the slot where the screwdriver goes, and you can just make out where it is here. Best thing to use is just um, a junior hacksaw blade and if we can get into this where the screw where the slot is it just cleans out the paint we're, remember we're not sawing the screw in half we're just clearing out the paint so then we've cleaned, cleaned out the slot so then we can get a, a decent screwdriver and get a good purchase in there and see if we can undo the screw so once you've cleaned out, once we've cleaned out the um, the slot in the screw um, I tend to use these old-fashioned screwdrivers um, I think everything in my workshop's a bit old-fashioned, but there we go. It all seems to work for me quite well. So again, make sure that the screwdriver fits well into the slot. Get a good purchase on it, and on a good day, just ease it backwards and forwards, and it hopefully will start to come undone. Taking great care not to stab yourself in the hand with a screwdriver. So again, this screw hasn't hasn't come out of here since it was first put in there, I suppose. I don't know, this horse is maybe 80 years old. So that's that's what we've retrieved out of this um, horse. Again it's important to um, keep these things in order because you might find later on that the, uh, the screws in the other hooves might be different lengths for whatever reason. So that's about it for, um, for, for the moment. Um, I hope that's been of some help. Um, it is just very important to make sure that if you are involved with any form of restoration is to pay attention to every tiny aspect of the horse not just the horse itself but what these things that people quite often just pay no attention to it all goes to make um, for, a, for a good restoration at the end of the day if you pay attention um, when you first start the job um, so I think that's about it for me for, for today um, you're very welcome to like and subscribe to the channel if you like thank you very much